piece of video on top of this video, for example, and do a picture in picture, for example. And let's just go ahead and scale this, uh, this down a bit. And I can uh, just go ahead and move this down. Uh, the parallax filter will work just about anything you can put on the timeline. So if you needed an effect that had a picture in picture that was actually jumping out at you, the parallax filter will work here as well. And you'll see that it offsets the, that as well. So you can sort of have this 3D view. So not only is the picture here in 3D, but the box itself is in 3D. And of course, you have to be sort of careful uh, how you use this because you can sort of overdo it uh, fairly quickly. So let's try to create good 3D. The example I gave you is probably not one that I would use, um, but just an example to show you that pretty much anything you put on the timeline, we have a way to put a parallax on that and give you that uh, 3D view. And it actually looks pretty interesting when you, uh, when you put your glasses on. So bringing in different graphics files and things like that, you can put them in 3D. And the big news here is notice that I'm doing all of this directly on the timeline while playing in real time. It's pretty amazing that we're able to do a lot of this without having to export the file and do all these other crazy right eye and left eye different things that I've seen in some of the other solutions out there. With Cineform's 64-bit plugin for CS5, we're able to do this all on a single timeline. Now, other things which I should go ahead and point out, as we're bringing in other pieces of video here, let me go ahead and just grab another clip here. If I want to go ahead and put a transition in between these clips, we can go ahead and do things like dissolves and other transitions, and they actually do a fairly decent job with the 3D, so it doesn't really detract from the 3D. One of the things that Cineform pointed out is anything that's 32-bit will retain the 3D information. So you'll notice here under Cineform Dissolves, they went ahead and added Cross Dissolve 32-bit. So when you go ahead and perform this dissolve here, you retain that 3D information. This is one of the huge problems I've seen with some of the other editing systems out there is you lose all of that ability. You basically get down to a, a cuts-only type setup unless you're rendering left eye and right eye and other crazy workflows out there. You can also just click on 32-bit to see what other 32-bit effects comes with CS5. So again, you see that we've got the Parallax 32-bit. We've got some other color corrections in 32-bit as well as some other effects that we have in there, horizontal flip and some other things. A lot of these different things will actually give you some pretty interesting effects as well. But just wanted to point those out that there's lots of different things that you can do. And I'm sure a lot of these things will change over time as people start to support the 3D workflow. But again, just wanted to point that out. When you're ready to export this and get ready to look at some other different methods of displaying your video, and there's a couple of different ways to do that, it's as easy as just going to File, Export Media, and you can click over here and you can go down to Cineform AVI, Cineform MOV. The reason you have the Cineform formats here is so you retain all of that active metadata in case you need to get in and adjust the file later. This will make a final timeline render for you, but still give you the ability to have all of that active metadata present for that timeline, which I think is fairly important as it looks at some of that information. So if you want to be able to pull that back in the first light and make some adjustments, you have that ability. You can also support any of these other formats here if you put them uh, in a side-by-side -side view or top-bottom or however your monitor wants to view that information. You can choose most of these other formats to, uh, to display that. And NVIDIA also comes with a stereo viewer that they offer that you can actually view these files through their viewer as well. So there's a number of different viewers out there if you're trying to do it in either passive or active. One of the things to point out, if you're trying to do this in, say, an anaglyph mode, let me come over here and show you how that works. Remember, you go back to display type, and let's just put that in an anaglyph mode so I can sort of see that. And I'm going to use uh, red, blue, a little easier to see. So as I'm looking at this information here, when I go back over here to export media, and let's just say that I wanted to export that out as a QuickTime file. Whatever you see in this window here is going to be the way that you're exporting. So again, if you're exporting and it looks like an anaglyph file there, then you should be all set. And if you come over here and you put it in a side-by-side -side view 
when you come back over here I'm just going to scrub the timeline to update that when you see side by side that's going to allow that television set when you play that back to, to detect oh there's a side by side signal here and again got the flexibility however you want to do it the most important thing is all of this is available in your export settings for a single step export you do not have to export right eye left eye um, if you don't want to if you need to go in and export right eye left eye it's as easy as going over here and just saying just give me the left eye and go ahead and render that now you've got the left eye and then go back in tell it that you need the right eye and now you've got the right eye and hit uh, export a cue or however you want to do that really really flexible now we've been talking a lot about active metadata and I've taken you pretty much through the whole process which is getting me from the SD card into the Cineform format uh, using HD link or other process and then going into first light looking at the convergence muxing and then bringing it into Premiere Pro trying to stay organized the whole way and this whole idea of active metadata why is that so important well if I look at this particular clip that I have here this clip is 30011 let's just go up and look at that let's say that I needed to make a change to this particular file here I'm gonna right mouse click on it and go to source settings. Here's the Cineform integration at work inside of Premiere Pro. So in first light at this point I can come right over here and let's go down and let's do something with those color LUTs that I showed you before just to make a point. So now I went ahead and sort of gave this um, a very dark look. I'm not going to save anything. All I have to do is go back over here to Premiere Pro and you'll notice instantly I get that uh, that color lookup so I can just go ahead and hit play and in real time it's working so let's go back in again right mouse click go to source settings and let's change that color lookup to a hot exterior look so now I've sort of got that hot look I go back over to to Premiere Pro into my sequence hit play and there it is updated in real time you know there's even my uh, my effect here so this is amazing because this means that at any time I can go back in and view this with the changes from first light right into Premiere Pro I can go in and adjust all these different things I can go back in and reset this color information here I can even go back in and if I just were to change some of the keystone here I'm, I'm gonna go ahead as I mentioned before I'll put this in a um, in an onion skin mode here and I'm just gonna sort of make make a point and I'm gonna change so when I go back into Premiere Pro you're gonna notice that all of that uh, changed inside of Premiere Pro this is uh, amazing integration now if you have the tangent wave unit that you see pictured here this is gonna allow you to actually while you're playing your video to go ahead and move any of the controls adjust any of the controls on the tangent wave and be able to manipulate that while this window is playing so simultaneously move any of the trackballs and the knobs uh, which are tied to settings Cineform's got most of the major ones covered and you don't have to keep flipping back over to first light and then back over to Premiere everything will happen within the Premiere Pro window again uh, this is great surface control tied into first light and Premiere Pro via the tangent wave and I highly recommend it that's the primary way that I sort of play around with my color adjust a lot of my convergence information when I uh, when I need to so I wanted to go back in and give you guys an example of some additional integration that we're using inside first light and Premiere Pro again all running in 64 bit well that's a quick look at Premiere Pro editing in 3d be on the lookout for some additional information coming out soon and I'm gonna go ahead and jump over onto the Macintosh and let the Macintosh users get a chance to see what their interface would look like when that ships a little later on it's supposed to be released the plugin from Cineform summer 2010 here's a quick look at how the applications work on the Mac in their present state again some of this is still beta at this particular point in time but uh, due to be released soon 